Our margins are looking good right now. I think we've got room for some more investment. What's going on everybody? It's Spark. Welcome to episode 4 of my Revive My Team career mode series. We are coming up to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix this time around. And we're opening with my team telling me effectively what to do with my money. And if you haven't seen last week's episodes, I um, I would definitely recommend checking it out. We'll give you a little bit more idea as to what happened. It was... It was a tense race, but it didn't quite go in my favour. But I'll let you guys um, figure that out for yourself. So, there's the card if you want to go see it. And if you're liking these videos, then do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as well. We would love to have you on board and it will certainly help me to produce more and more content um, in the future. We're looking now forward to Baku, which is a track that kind of resonates with me for quite a few reasons. I won my first league race with... IRRL before it was um, before it was rebranded um, with that one, so that one I certainly holds kind of holds dear to my heart. And with this, we're going to apply um, we're going to invest even more now with the um, aero and the chassis parts with more um, time actually between these. I realised when I selected the calendar, I put in a long time for Azerbaijan with the second race um, coming up after that is actually going to be Canada so literally two events straight after each other and as you'll just see there there's more investment we've done in the chassis side uh, but the f for the first time in this um, so is this a mid-season interview with um, Will Buxton himself let's see what he's got to ask us it's great to be back at your headquarters and got to say an awful lot's changed since we were last here let's dive in with some questions it's always tough to stay on the cutting edge of technology will you be updating your facilities in the near future well no to be honest i thought i was just going to keep my money where it is and then just leave the teams without any investment. of course i'm going to update them what do you think what kind of question is that it looks like there are a few more desks in your personnel department have you been investing in that area yeah, but not as much as I should, but we're not going to go into the bare bones of that here. Would you say that it's important to develop your drivers as much as possible? Well, given that we got Dan Tickton, someone for Formula 2, yes. And if anything else, he's probably going to badmouth me on Twitch, so he's got to behave himself. You seem to be stuck in the mid-tier at the moment. Are you happy here, or will you be aiming to challenge the top teams in the near future? Well, duh. Sponsors seem to be climbing over one another to get their name onto your car. What do you plan on investing that extra money into? Realistically, it's got to be the durability department. I'm not going to try and be sarcastic with that answer. That place really needs to get up to spec too. Well, thanks so much as ever for your time. It's hugely appreciated. We've got an issue we'd like your input on. Minus 50k for 750 resource points, that, my friend, is a no-brainer. A little cost for quite a lot of gains, so... No, we're not going to decline. We are absolutely going to take them up on that offer. Thanks for stepping in and helping handle that. Well, it's kind of an easy decision, but you're welcome anyway. So let's run through the calendar. Let's see what upgrades we can get through. And I think already we see one... That um, has sadly failed, which that's going to be a bit of a nuisance to sort out. But we'll add the resource points. It's just I wish I could have had it on ideally in time for this round because it's a very power-hungry circuit. Some new developments to come through, but some of them have failed quality control. We'll need to tell the team what to redevelop via the R&D screen. At least they sound like they care. The engineers, and with that, we're gonna re we we we're just gonna restart it. I mean, at least it'll be guaranteed to go on by whenever it can go along. I mean, we I remember we signed with Renault at the beginning of the season, which actually had a hundred a hundred in um, stats. So they got our um, there goes so our engine is just up there actually with Mercedes in terms of um, outright performance, but our aerodynamics and the um, and the chassis. Uh, they're the places that we really need to invest in and with that I've invested more into the quality control part of the durability so we can finally get that up to spec 2 and just do anything we can just to keep the money coming in because more money, more development, hopefully we can attract some more expensive sponsors um, with that as well. With practice I'm just going to skip past that and just show you that we got all the resource points because why the hell not. 
Take turns, well, managed to get a few in there, and with the development boosts, the good thing that actually happened this time around is that Michael Massey decided not to restrict any um, <laughs> restrict any development boosts. I think it's a glitch in the game that sometimes if you do like a certain um, challenge um, during the um, during the practice session, it doesn't actually give you the reward for it. I remember once I actually did um, actually stick by the racing line. And I thankfully I managed to stay by the racing line, but didn't actually give me the um, it didn't actually give me the development boost for it. So I had to do another lap, and it still failed. So I ended up having to do it by a quick practice instead. So really, really annoying how that works. But you know, it's um, nothing's perfect in life. And then mind you, this is no Cyberpunk 2077, so it's not quite as glitchy as that. So. Let's see what qualifying brings. In terms of practice and how I felt, I know we got a powerful engine, so this track may actually work to our advantage somewhat as we see as some of my laps um, sort of went, I'm only just going to show you like, the sneak peeks uh, for now, I think. If I can, I think there's a full lap within this video. If not, then sure, we'll just roll with it. But as you'll see, Q1 was a bit of a doddle for us. We actually... I was not blinking there. We actually got P2 fastest, which has got to be some sort of fluke in the grand scheme of things. But Dan ticked him as well, getting through into Q2. So once again... IRRL is really moving up in terms of outright pace. So we did it in Spain last time and we're doing it now. We are moving towards the a Q2 regular team instead of going out in Q3. Well, unfortunately, I didn't do the team much justice in the first couple of races. I, don't, I think Spain I didn't actually... I, I can't even remember when I got through into Q2. Speaking of Q2, this is how my um, second lap went. Unfortunately, I'm still struggling with a little bit of understeer here. So we've already skipped the first part of the lap, which isn't too bad, I guess. We're at the end of the first sector now. Drop down to second for this tight and twisty section. We're coming up to the much maligned castle section, one that really caught out Charles Leclerc famously in 2019 and almost caught me out during my league race win. I think it was actually the first um, league highlights reel that I actually made on my YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, I'll put up a card or leave a link to it or something in this video. As we go around the end of Sector 2, the engine is actually working well. It's a break very, very early there because unlike the previous game, you can't jump over the curb. With this one, I don't feel like I've got the confidence or grip to do that. But thankfully, I'm not spinning at the moment like I did in the uh, Mexico race that's just gone for IRRLs, which is a massive shame. It was full wet. And imagine full wet on this game, would, or on this track rather, would just be an absolute killer. As we go now, we have to do... We left it quite late. What can we do in terms of getting through to Q2? It's just the late 1 minute 37. And look at that. We, the Minnows, IRL Spark Racing, have gotten through into Q3 for the first time. But unfortunately, it's only 14th for Dan Tickton. And we left it down to the end, and this, this is all just a bonus at the moment, so I'm not going to put so much emphasis on this particular round. But looking at this, this was just... I was on cloud nine at this point. We threw into Q3, and like I said, anything else is a bonus. So I just left it very, very late to go out for my lap. I go wide there, and unfortunately, that's uh, thrown quite a lot of time away. Probably about three or four tenths, given how long the straight is. It probably punishes you even more for making a mistake. Which is, um, for qualifying is pretty good. And for races as well, it's probably going to be a little bit of carnage. But coming down to the line, and what do we actually do for Q3? Oh, it's only P9. But to be fair, like I said, anything was still a bonus. And to get through um, into P9 for the session is still a massive achievement from the virtual staff or whoever have just been making the calls at IRRL naming myself but to get through to q3 we've achieved a lot already in this session so as of now we actually get 
an extra point over our rival Sebastian Vettel, who I think went out in Q2. The scores are now coming up to 14-17 in his favour. We, I can't really see us catching Sebastian over the next few races. Um, we only got about three, two or three races to go. I can't remember what's on the screen. So we're going to need an absolute miracle if we we're going to get back on board with him. But, you know, it's Baku. Anything can happen. Seb could crash out. We could have a blinder. Who knows what's going to happen. So with that, I'm going to pass you guys over to race day. And a warm welcome to you from Azadlik Square, heart of Baku and home, of course, to the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. With high speeds, tight corners, and few runoff zones, many are expecting a safety car here today, so our drivers will have to stay very much on their toes and hopefully away from the barriers. The Baku City Circuit measures roughly six kilometers and is made up of 20 corners and two DRS zones. The circuit winds around the narrow city, through the old town, and even brushes against the city's medieval walls. However, as beautiful as the setting is, this track is also a ferocious technical challenge where the smallest of mistakes could lead to catastrophic consequences for all of our drivers. With the Grand Prix nearly upon us, Anthony Davidson is by my side once again to offer his perspective. Let me ask you about Alpine. We have a number of changes to the aerodynamic regulations this year and the signs haven't looked good for them so far in terms of getting to grips with those changes. It doesn't look promising for them so far. And if the new regs have hit them as hard as we think, well, I suspect they may need a few late nights at the factory to get back on track. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday puts him on pole, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Hamilton, Lando Norris, and Sainz, Perez, the owner driver, Fernando Alonso, and Pierre Gasly, Vettel, Stroll, Daniel Tictum, and Ocon, Giovinazzi, Ricardo. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Yuki Tsunoda and Kimi Raikkonen. Russell, Latifi, Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out. Then let's see who can prevail today. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So as you saw there, one of the drivers, I think it was Daniel Ricciardo, is actually it's actually got a penalty. So we actually move up a place by default and start in eighth place, which really boosts our chances against Vettel um, in this um, season. So with that, we're going to go down to the start um, of the race. We've got five lights on, and we are underway in Baku. It was a nice initial getaway from Perez, but with us was okay to so go down to the first corner. Everyone's constantinering up, so we get up just ahead of Perez in seventh, but we go side by side with Lando, and from there it looks like we are through into sixth place, so we gain two places already in the start. We get through on the softs that we got through before, so there's plenty of wear, I think, on them as signs uh, is ahead of us now in the Ferrari. We take things very, very easy. This is easily one of the highest um, places we've been. Um, obviously, it'll compare to season one, where it didn't really get very far at all when I skipped all of that. Um, but we finished P6 actually in Bahrain, so that's a strong result. Spain didn't go our way, and Imola was a hard fought 10 place, so we got what we could out of there. Position stayed the same moderately for around three or so laps. But we don't actually find ourselves dropping off. In fact, we find ourselves staying with the Ferrari. So the clear the upgrades that we're making and our decision to move to Renault as an engine supplier New is definitely is working in our favour. So looking at the above, we actually get a call to change our strategy. The tie wear is actually much more than what we expected. The wear I think is about 5% um, per tire per lap which means we can go quite long probably with those soft compound tires on as we go down to the long long straight. It could be possible uh, barring like even with or without safety cars that we could actually do a one stop this race. 
and to see where it goes from there. As we come up behind Carlos Sainz at the start of lap 5, we're much, much closer to him because maybe we could quite possibly overtake the other red team in this league. We could possibly overtake a Ferrari. As we go down to the start-finish straight, DRS is obviously activated. As you go into the driver view there, we are going to... We, well, we force Sainz to defend, but we go round to the outside, and oh, it looks like Sainz has just kept the position there. But all things considered, we have a very, very racy car here at Azerbaijan. That could... This, this could be an absolute blinder for us. I mean, we're already pulling away from Vettel, who looks like he's dropping amongst the midfield. And if we're staying with the Ferraris, then realistically, we could fight probably for about fifth or fourth place here. This is a very, very good track, I think, for us. A good thing as we swap that power unit. But as you can see, the tyres are starting to get a little bit of wear. But they're far from, they're far from puncture territory, which means we could go longer if we wanted to. And with our pace as good as it is in a straight line, I think that's what we're going to do. Which means we should be able to defend from other cars um, should they come to overtake us. So it'll be, it'll be worth giving it a go, but... It's not the end of the world if we don't get um, if if we don't get a podium. It's not the end of the world because more points are what we need essentially for our team. As we go down to the at the end of the castle session, I got to say the camera angles in this game are absolutely astounding. As in front, it's Max Verstappen out in front in the Red Bull. As we stay behind signs at the end of lap six, the Ferrari, I think. We are setting ourselves up for an overtake quite nicely here. He is so, so close to us. And this will be quite easy for us to actually do it here. We go into the shade. DRS is open. And Sainz actually, yay, yeah, comes into the pits. So those of you on the soft tyre are actually all starting to come into the pits. So that means we've got to play your turn of strategy. And as you can see behind us, Dan Tickton actually comes in behind us as well. But um, we have to accept, I think... We're probably going to lose out in the long run. But us, we have decided to stay out with Max Verstappen out as well. Who's also on the medium tyre. So it just depends how far he can get those mediums. Who really inform us of what we can do. I really don't like the hards on this game. So I, ideally I want to avoid going on to them. Because I just have no grip on them. And I ended up spinning or just understeering like crazy. Which means that was surely... Um, that will surely lose this track position in the grand scheme of things. As you can see, the wear is really starting to go up. But it does still, it doesn't feel too bad. As we go round um, to the final corner, what is happening with Max Verstappen? We're actually in potential second place, which I think with last time out in Spain, it's, 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 a, it's a race that I still feel cheated by that. We should have won. As Verstappen comes in, he only done eight laps on medium tyres. So I'm not quite sure whether the tyre upgrades are working or not on that Red Bull. But for us, we storm through. And it comes on to about lap 10 now at the moment. Actually, so yeah, he came in on the end of lap 9. So lap 10 he came in. This lap, then. Come into the pits at the end of this lap. We're deciding to go in. And having done 10 laps on tyres, which have done Q3. I reckon we can get one set of mediums all the way through to the end. This has got to be an absolutely brilliant out lap, um, in lap for us. Because... We know we're going to lose track position, that's a fact, but it just depends on how much time we lose in the grand scheme of things, as we come into the pit lane very nicely there. And I've got to say, when you nailed the pit lane entry in that corner, it's absolutely brilliant, as we see ourselves coming down into the pits. I mean, what kind of stoppers are going to be for us? Go, go, go. 2 and 5 Nah, it's all right, lads. It's all right. It's not too bad. As we come out behind the Alpine which I think of Fernando Alonso I would have been annoyed if it I think if it's Esteban Ocon I am going to be slightly annoyed because how he got away from me last race I do not know but no it's Alonso actually it's actually Fernando Alonso who knows where Esteban is but at the moment I don't care we could be on for potentially mind-boggling result which just depends if we can stay within a certain time for Max Verstappen. And as for us, we see actually Dan Tickton behind us at the moment. So he's just made some time on us. Um, and he's actually ahead of Vettel. So 
fair play to Dan Tictum so far for managing to get ahead of um, Sebastian Vettel, I think maybe in the pit stops. But I'm hoping Tictum has a better race because, because his focus is quite low at the moment and anything like that could really boost his chances on track. I've got to get his focus up and really is something I should probably, it's sort of like a side note, something I should really be investing in as we are getting a bit of a run on El Plan for Lando Alonso himself as we come down to the straight which feels like an absolute eternity before I actually catch up to him and there we are Fernando Alonso who's going to defend to the inside and then to the outside what are we going to do we go round the outside and we play a blinding overtake on fresher tyres if I'm honest but hey it still looks really really good on when I've recorded it so halfway through the next lap comes round and we have got ourselves Pierre Gasly in our sights in the Alpha Tauri and Gasly I don't think he actually came up much in the last season as well. As we go round round to the outside, we go actually go purple in the last sector. What are we going to do about Gasly? We tough it out the outside and the outside is very much one of my favourite overtaking slots in this race it seems. We have made some crucial on track moves because all that is going to do is tell us how we're going to get on relative to the cars in front of us. As we see, Tictum has been passed by Vettel and has now been passed by Lance Stroll and sadly... IRL's second driver is not having a good session at all. He's still finishing the race, but to be behind Aston Martin is not really where we want to be as a team, given the result that Sebastian had last week in Spain, where somehow, somehow, he managed to fend off Max Verstappen and get a podium. But 14 laps into this race, we are, curr we are currently coming up to lap 15 and with the mediums who are not actually getting a lot of wear out of them they I think they're only about 10% wear on some of each tire so this is going to be potentially we could we could easily get this um, set of tires through to the end we're not exactly doing personal best or fastest laps but seeing what's going on behind us Max Verstappen comes in on the next lap where he comes out is going to be quite crucial to us because we could even leapfrog him. Us, the midfield team, could realistically have a chance on merit to actually win a Grand Prix. Let's see where Verstappen is when he comes outside the pits. Where are we? Where are we going to do? We're, there we are. We're around the outside and we're through. We have actually leapfrogged Max Verstappen on a one-stop strategy. He's going to be lightning at the moment, so we're going to have to hold him off. But that puts us actually in the net lead of the Grand Prix. Because Verstappen went onto the softs. I wonder where everybody else is going to do. But looking, coming to come to the next lap, Verstappen really is reeling us in. So he's obviously rattled by the fact that we have le le leapfrogged him. No, you probably didn't see it coming, just that is how close he is as we go into the castle section. Thankfully, we get plenty of traction out of there, but this is where I really lose time in lap relative to Max. You can see he's right back on us again as we come out of the castle section, coming now down to the long straight onto the tricky end of what is the end of Sector 2. These camera shots are really making it look really, really good. As we go down to the left hand, we take a very conservative line. But Max is gaining and he is right, right behind us. Now he's six tenths. Is that enough to hold him off through the straight? As we go down the long back straight. Is he going to catch us? He'd be deploying all of his energy. I know with that, with the long sweeping left to right. Maybe deploying your energy there isn't necessarily the best thing. As Verstappen now has DRS. Bottas comes into the pits. We are actually leading with a realistic chance of winning the Grand Prix and this is only round four of this um, of, of this career mode oh I'm gen I'm generally quite nervous right now cue the music
20 laps in and the Red Bull is close. All on the corner now, but looking how close he's getting behind us here. Surely he's got the overtake done on us. Surely we can't quite hold him off. Verstappen is so close. We're deploying everything that we've got to keep him behind. We're making him go the hard way round around the outside, but he has unfortunately got us. We just didn't quite the edge of the A little bit of contact there, admittedly, between us. As we see, he goes to defend down to the inside, but he looks like he's gone too deep. Get the traction around of the DRS, and we have retaken the lead. This is absolutely bonkers. Where Verstappen faltered, we have come back, and it looks like we are on our way potentially we we can actually win this race oh my god i am so so tense right now just looking at this hopefully soon but look how close he's getting he is all over the back of us virtually knows the tail in the castle section as you come up now to my least favorite part where thankfully haven't done a Charles Leclerc and binned it but he's still with us coming up through the castle section oh and that lock up is definitely gonna cost us he's so close to the back of us what we are watching here guys really is David versus Goliath He's even closer than he was before, but we actually break and let him, let ourselves get the DRS so we can come back at him. We're round to the outside. And we fought back. We got the move done. And Verstappen doesn't have much of an answer there. And this could be, we just have to keep doing this, just as long as we're coming back, as soon as he throws something at us, then realistically we can answer anything that he's done for us, done to us. He's always going to have more tire life than us, more pace around the lower speed section of the corners, but... Oh man, I was so, so nervous when I was recording this. I'm not going to tell you what happens. But to go down to lap 24, we take the castle section relatively well, as we see behind, Verstappen is still with us, he's at, no, he's actually dropping off, actually, it doesn't look like that he's got the life anymore that he needs, or the confidence, and that's giving us the buffer that we need, and that is slowly and surely handing this Grand Prix back to us. As you'll see, we're going down to start the final lap. All we have to do is just keep it planted. And we should come out winning this Grand Prix. I honestly can't believe the position I am in right now. Verstappen fighting us tooth and nail and us IRRL racing I think I pronounced that right IIRL the minnows of the Formula 1 field are taking the fight to freaking Red Bull and for the most part looks like we're coming out on top with Baku being like I said at the start of this video where, where my first league race before it was rebranded to IRRL and it would only make fitting sense for us if this would be IRL's first win in my team career mode. We come down to the final corner. We just need a good exit from here and that should keep Max behind. Unless he can get the DRS straight on us, we're deploying everything that we've got to keep the Red Bull behind us here. But looking behind, is he close enough to overtake it? I don't think that he is. It's going to go in our favour. We're going to cross the line. We've won! Yes, 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 guys, yes. Come on, boys. 
Fantastic. You've won the Grand Prix. We have done it. We've won our first Grand Prix in my team. Driver of the day. You know it. We've done it. Get in there. Today. I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. Tyre management, whatever it was, it's made the difference. What a way to end this episode. In the fourth round of season two, Amazing we've won our first race. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. Well, looks like your luck has changed. Things went a lot better than last weekend, didn't they? Well, thank God there wasn't any rain, because rain is not my friend, as you'll know, in league we racing. We underestimated you, didn't we? Uh, yeah, damn right you did. Do you think you were lucky not to end your race with that crash? I don't know. I didn't even have a crash. I don't know what you're on about. Maybe it's just the game. It's, maybe, it's the game doing a glitchy thing again. Right. Well, that's everything. And that's the about as turbulent, as uh, triumphant as the post-interview races get. And look at the rivalry breakdown there. We have stuffed Vettel as he did to us last time. We are locked each other 19 for 19 going in for three races unfortunately it wasn't Ticktum's day but we've won on what is an absolutely incredible incredible race for us we don't get all the interview questions so it's not exactly a perfect weekend but we held off a Red Bull in a mid-tier car I think now maybe it's um, probably time to up the... As you guys know, I've been running at 100 AI. Maybe now is a sign it's time to potentially move up. Now. I think we've got room for some more investment. So I think for next episode, I'm going to try 105. And then when I feel a bit more confident, move it straight up to uh, 110. And that should see my uh, progression gone well enough as it is. But there we have it, guys. We won our first Grand Prix. If you like this episode, please hit, at least leave a like and a comment. That would be really nice. And make sure you subscribe as well. That would really help me out with this channel. But for now, I'm going to go and celebrate my win. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye-bye.